So, Gero, our next speaker is also going to talk about power missions, power, power measurements, uh, in this case, high speed ones. And um, he, uh, Gero has been a developer for 20 years. He's a, now a researcher in India, uh, recently moved to Lyon. Uh, so he's fluent in French. He will give the presentation in French to all of you. And uh, that'll be great. And go ahead. Um, this talk is about intermittent power systems and high precision, high speed power measurements. So the first part is uh, energy harvesting is one part of it. So <coughs> the idea is uh, to have many different sources like solar, wind, piezo, you name it. Um, so it's versatile. You have then no battery. So basic. Well, in principle, you could have unlimited lifetime for small devices. Uh, it's more eco-friendly. Um, but at the same time, the power supply is uh, unpredictable. So from a paper, I brought some, some time series of uh, the, the, the voltage supply, so it's very erratic. You have no, no means to predict when your device will be powered, and um, you need to find a solution. So one idea is to have a non-volatile hardware. So that means your memory, your CPU, you, the whole hardware is, uh, keeps the information even when, when the power goes down. Uh, for now, it's only or mainly available for RAM. Uh, some CPU designs are already on the market, which are non-volatile. But still, you have the problem of uh, consistent state. Even if so, the power drops, you have no energy. The, the information in the CPU and RAM may, may be the same, but if you power up, what's about the other stuff of, of your device, like um, any I IRQs running or network stack is in a stale mode, and timing critical parts, so you have a peri periodic timer, but maybe no real-time clock, you have no idea when, when to go next. So th the motivation of our group is uh, to investigate checkpointing, so to get all the the states of, of the hardware into, in, into one precise moment in time and to be able to restore it from memory. And the research is um, to find out which techniques to use for, for example, this uh, non-volatile memory or flash to, to dump the, the snapshots. Um, the whole memory or incremental, this depends on the speed. Uh, implicit or explicit, so do I as a developer call for, for a snapshot or is it done automatically? Um, and now we are at a point where we want to, to measure performance between the, the different um, implementations on, and ideas. Um, there's Zeta. It's an existing, existing implementation of a bare metal system implemented for the MSP430. It's including checkpointing, which also takes uh, the peripheral state um, but it's a proof of concept uh, and runs only on a limited um, number of hardware, actually one, but also the peripherals are limited. So the idea is now to port the ideas to, to RiotOS to have a broader uh, access to, to peripherals and, and, uh, and CUs. Um, so for the first test and uh, implementation, we use the <coughs> msp 430 FR5969, it uh, has, I think, uh, two kilobytes uh, of FRAM and two kilobytes of um, SRAM. It's a low power system. And to, to be able to use it, we had to, to um, advance the support in Riot OS for the MSP430 in general. So the FRAM device is only supported by the MSP430 GCC, so I uh, implemented a new tool chain. Um, the device we have has only two kilobytes of RAM, which is very limited. So all the libc stuff, if you use printf, you get stack overflow and so on. So it's a bit tricky to use. Um, but at the same time, the threading model of uh, Riot is a perfect match for our checkpointing, since it's already dumping all the registers and so on. So what we basically had to do is um, at the specific point in time, we copy the, the memory of the peripherals, the RAM, 
just to a non-volatile memory in the in yeah just to the non-volatile memory and when the power gets up again we we check for a valid checkpoint and just copy all the the memory back um we have two explicit functions it's save and restore they basically uh check for the next checkpoint so we have two at the moment kind of more if you like um saves the peripheral state it's a uh, this function calls other functions you can you have to implement for different drivers and then the the whole memory is uh, copied to this non volatile area um, the same for for the restore it's um, checking for a valid checkpoint or the next checkpoint in line restoring the complete memory and restoring the state of the peripherals and write is taking care of the rest, like uh, all the CPU registers and so on. So on startup, um, it's checking for a valid checkpoint. So if you have a new device just flashed, there's no valid checkpoint. So it's it's doing a cold start. And a nice nice thing is you can just hook into the um, CRT section. It's a uh, it's sorting the the sections by members. So you can just dump your your naked function and it's just called when you want so it's very nice and clean um, so for peripherals and drivers um, you need to to do some work or this is the main work you have to do it's uh, registers memory and the state whatever it is um, and in in, um, in Prague I talked to some riot guys and they the idea is to have a consistent initialization state of of the peripherals um, anyway so maybe it's a good idea to align all the work and a good example or one example is uh, for the network drivers um, to have to detect and restore stale connections and for example mesh information which you want to save in or which is a good example where you want to have a snapshot in so on the right is just a example of the current implementation you you save the DMA, uh, DMA GPIO, UART, and timers information if you have modules for that. And that's basically it. So the status and roadmap for the checkpointing is um, we have a working pro work in progress um, repository in GitHub. Uh, there are some some uh, pull requests which are old now because um, we changed to a different platform. Just the the same features, but a bit newer. So I started implementing uh, different boards for the same uh, same code base. Um, we for now implemented only explicit checkpointing, so I have to call the functions myself. But the next step will be to, to have some external trigger to to um, call the checkpointing. Um, then the question is uh, for us: Are there any other platforms like ARM and maybe? systems without uh, volatile memory, which could uh, benefit from the checkpointing system. Then also implement checkpointing for more drivers. And um, yes, this uh, implicit or transparent checkpointing is another topic where um, different use cases and different scenarios are implemented and uh, researched. Um, so the user has no uh, interaction and uh, does ha not have to care about checkpointing at all. This was uh, the first part. The second part is now performance measurements. We are also interested in, in measuring the different snapshotting and uh, checkpointing implementations and techniques. Um, basically the wall time, so how much time does it take to, to do all this? Is it faster or sl much slower than slow at all than a cold boot um, and the power consumption and uh, yeah for now we did not find an affordable off-the-shelf solution with our requirements so I started uh, to design a new one it's a uh, called MOSFET ammeter it's a high speed meaning two mega samples per second and it's streaming so we can have unlimited amount of time of uh, 
two mega sample 14 bit data. Uh, it has a high dynamic range from less than 100 nanoamperes to 3 milliamperes. And it's a constant voltage source. So it's um, a voltage source in itself. You cannot have another voltage source and measure the current only. And in the current setup, it's for 3.3 volts and up to 30 milliamperes. On the right, you see the setup. On the left, it's a development board for Cortex M7 with a high speed USB port. And as an extension board, the measuring device, you need shielded cables because um, at this low current, you go near with your hand and you see a, a, a signal. And an 18 volt power supply to have a high um, shunt value. So how does it work in, in principle? It's taken from a paper. It's, uh, in, in the main idea is that you have a op amp and a MOSFET to keep the voltage stable. So normally your shunt resistor is very, very small, so your, your voltage is not influenced. Um, but at the same time, a low shunt value means that you have a lot of noise and you can hardly measure it. In this case, with this setup and the, the 18 volts, I'm able to, instead of 0.1 or even milli, milli ohm, I can take 400 ohm. Um, then I take, I have three parallel channels uh, with different gains. In the end, a hardware channel select and a 14-bit ADC in the end. Um, what are the features of the device? Um, as I said, it provides power to the device under test. So it's not a measuring the, the power coming from another uh, USB, for example, but it provides the power. It's one of the uh, fe features or limitations for some people. Um, at the same time, it stores even, or also at uh, two mega samples per second, the GPIO state. So I have two pins on the board. You can connect to the device on a test and you can use it for triggers or other information. Um, the complete client code is written in, in Python. Uh, NumPy and Matplotlib. It uh, has a live preview you see on the right with a um, FFT at the same time, you so you can see what you measure. And have data viewer and uh, converter to uh, NumPy and CSV file or whatever data format you like. And one idea is to have it maybe in the automated test and regression uh, setup since it has triggers and you can, can measure very precisely the, the power consumption. So this is a first measurement. It's a in the prototype state, so it's a first measurement. So I have a simple 1K resistor, a small button, I toggle it, and then you see it's, um, it's a logarithmic state scale, so we have 3.3 uh, volts, so we expect 3.3 uh, millivolts, which we can see here. And when I, when I disconnect the, the resistor, it's uh, discharged by the 400 ohms. Uh, and you can see that we are going, it's a, okay, that's bad to see. We are, <coughs> here it's 10 to the minus nine, so here's nanoamperes, and we, we have a couple of hundred nanoamperes in the uh, disconnected state. So there's some, some offset um, from, from radio interference and so on. Uh, maybe some miscalibration, um, and we are getting still some noise, which I will, address in the next iterations of the device. So for the software, you <coughs> can also see uh, these green and uh, red bars. You can set them manually in the data view, and you get the, the um, average um, current in this area, the total um, power consumption in this area, uh, and you can even measure the frequency if you put it maybe on, on two, two spikes. Um, so very, very useful to measure the, the power consumption interactively. This is um, the, same, the same data, but now it's not scaled. These are the, uh, this is the output of the uh, three ADCs. So this is when the, shun, uh, when the resistor is still um, connected. It's on the, on the uh, highest on the lowest gain ADC, on the lowest gain channel, when I disconnect, it's going down, 
changing to the next channel, and then it's uh, on the lowest channel. And all this is done in hardware, so it's uh, very fast. Um, the second one, so it's a second measurement, it's um, an MSP430 with a in a low power mode, and it's toggling just an LED. So <coughs> we again see uh, power consumption of roughly one millivolts when the LED is on. Then I we see some some work is done, and then the LED is off, and we see uh, a couple of hundred uh, nanoamperes, which is consistent with the with the data sheet of 0.5 uh, microamperes. So it's a status and roadmap. It's a working prototype. There are still small improvement and bug fixes for the next iteration. Uh, so I have some channel selection artifacts on very, very small time scales when there are some, some spikes. Uh, reduce noise. For us, it's important to have uh, programmable power off. So we can say on the, on the client side, on the computer, so turn, turn it off now and measure how it behaves for our, for our checkpointing. Um, and I, I plan to inc include the MCU and everything in, into one single board. Yep. So in conclusion, um, we implemented first checkpointing Riot with, uh, with a simple API for users and drivers. And we are still searching for new and in existing use cases for very small current or power devices and checkpointing. Um, so if you have one and have ideas, I'm very interested. And we developed a high performance M meter for power measurement. And I'm also interested to be interested in such a device and what are your, your further requirements. So, yeah, thank you. So time for Q&A. Anybody has some questions? All right. Oh, well, there's a few. No, there's a second. I'll start from the back. So just a, a simple question. Um, how much do you sell your uh, performance ammeter for power measurement? Uh, I have no price tag yet. I'm talking to, to the guys in, in Umeria next week. Um, I don't know. Okay. So the, the pure hardware is less than 100 euros, but it's hard to set up and everything. I have no idea. Uh, for the Python code, is it open source or is it? Or? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Superiors will tell me. Um, on the on the checkpointing of the drivers, I'm curious. Um, how much can you actually save um, of of startup times when you're restoring drivers that are a bit more complex than basically anything any any trivial initialization initial initialization code. I have I, no, no numbers. Yeah. It's part of the research to yeah. just investigate it. And it's, yeah. Thank there, you. There may be some numbers for the, the other project for, for Zeta, but not for Riot, and so it's pretty new. Mm -hmm. Thanks. But this is exactly the question we want to answer. Can we save, or does it, how much does it cost to release the program of thinking? So as I, I saw, you had the op, uh, option of multiple checkpoint uh, locations with the counter. Um, so how fast does your flash run out? And so does your flat, you, you're, you're writing to flash. No, no, at the moment. You're writing to FRAM, FRAM, FRAM so it doesn't wear out. And how many, how many checkpoints can you write to that? Depends on the size of your FRAM and your free memory you're willing to sacrifice. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any um, uh, um, numbers on like how much um, how much memory do you need to actually have this uh, mechanism working? Like, what's the ov basically what's the overhead in terms of? Um, so at least for now, it's it's just copying the whole S one. So now incremental, <coughs> no smart copying because it's mostly faster and consumes less energy. So it's at, it's at least the, the amount of RAM you have. 
does some, some information about the peripherals, which then again depends on, on the drivers and the peripherals you use, from a couple of bytes to whatever. If for use cases, maybe you could look at uh, some LoRaR use cases with like uh, they have uh, like the simplest uh, types of uh, sensors that just like wake up and and then go back to sleep. And it seems like uh, could be uh, one uh, one area where you could find some use cases. All right. Thank you. No, no more questions. Right? No. All right. Thank you. <laughs>